Oh wait, no longer. Greatness has arrived. Welcome to the Trophy Room, a PlayStation podcast made by the players for the players. I am your host, Joseph, a.k.a. Mr. Badbit, and it is here where me and my best friend Kyle talk about the latest, the greatest in all things PlayStation. Of course, you can listen to this show wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube at Bad Bit games and if you like what you hear please consider dropping us a five star review once we get to 100 reviews on itunes we're gonna have a giveaway where a lucky winner their first ps5 game will be on us so make sure you drop us a five star review over there on itunes and if you really really like us you could drop us a buck over at patreon.com slash bad so with all that said and with all that out of the way the greatest co-host whoever is whoever will be mr kyle stevenson how are you sir real great Jazzed yeah. up today. Yeah. Jazzed up. I'm ready Energized. to go. Yeah. Dude. Uh, a lo- lot of fall guys today. A lot of fall guys. Um, so it, a lot of highs from that, but a lot of lows, which we'll get into. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. And you've platinum Ghost of Tsushima, I saw. I did. Wow. So you've been a busy boy. Busy boy. And let me tell you something. First and foremost, thank you, everybody, and new listeners who came in from last week's show. We had two shows last week, one about the state of play, the other about Spider-Man. More controversy, I think. I don't know. It's yeah. been a blur. It's been a busy week. Just if you've only listened to one show last week, just know there's a second one out there. Yeah. And it's equally they as work, amazing. They work really well together. They're they're like Infinity War and Endgame. Like you don't yeah. get the full story unless you listen to both. Exactly, because <laughs> the first episode, 50% of the listeners just die, <laughs> and the second one, they all come back, and we're all fighting like Xbox people. It's nuts. Yeah. Uh, with that, Kyle, listen, we got a lot to talk about. Like, we are talking about Halo's delay. Yeah, we're getting all Xboxy a little bit, and its effect on this holiday, not just for Xbox, but more importantly, what this means for PlayStation going into the future. We're going to talk about Fall Guys' amazing sales and tracking on Twitch. We're going to talk about more uh, Last of Us updates, some more Ghost of Tsushima stuff. We're going to even talk about KFC. Like, guys, yeah, the sky's (laughs) the limit. And not to mention, WB is not for sale anymore, or are they? Woo! But before we talk about all that, before we talk about all that, Kyle, it's been so long. But like, it's been, I think, at least like two or three weeks since we talked about what you've been playing. Yeah. So, Kyle, what you've been playing? I mean, like you mentioned, I Platinum Ghost last night. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Actually, immediately after we did our uh, Road to Greatness episode on Ghost of Tsushima, which you'll be able to listen to on Friday mm-hmm. on Patreon. Uh, for Patreon subscribers, $3 and up, you'll get us going in depth about ghosts and how much we enjoyed our time with it. And the, the platinum is real fun. Yeah. Um, at, at the end, there is one, one side thing that at you like the collectibles. There's one thing that I just could not find. Cause the question mark is hidden so well on the edge of the map. It was a haiku that I just could, I couldn't see the question mark. And so it took me a while to find that one. Um, but yeah, the game's stellar. It's, Gorgeous, yeah. and I'm happy to add that to the platinum. Eight more until fifty. I'm so really Bug happy. Bugsnax is my fifty. That's my plan. It, is Bugsnax your fifty? Th- that is my plan. God, yeah. you know they get you <laughs> with the weenie for hands, the song. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The what were what what are you a water melon a water wellin? What was it? Oh, uh, oh, I don't a mew mew webin <laughs> a, a wee memin. I forgot what a wee memin. A wee melon. <laughs> Jesus, this game is... It's ridiculous what's going on. God bless that PR yeah. team. And then other than Ghosts, it's just been nothing but Fall Guys. Same. I mean, we played last night till 1.30 in the morning. We were trying, trying to, to get a friend of a, a, a friend of a friend or yeah. a friend's significant other, their partner, Yeah. Uh, the five win trophy. And we got him up to, what, four? We got him up to... No, three. Three. And, and he then, lost on the fourth one. I think it was the hexagon. I think he lost at the hexagon. Right? Oh, I kept getting disconnected, so I, I don't know which game yeah. it was. But <laughs> And a, a no bonus show for, for everybody. We will have a Fall Guys Road to Greatness as well on Monday. Uh, we're going to be recording that right after this. I have so many like thoughts on that game. Yeah. Like It is just so gosh dang delightful in a time where we really need it the most. And I think that's mm-hmm. why Fall Guys shines so dang well. Is that like in the midst of this pandemic, you just need jelly beans falling to their doom. Hey, remember what I said a couple weeks ago? The the What's bold that? statement I said that this might be even bigger than Rocket League? Yeah. We're on our way. 
We are I mean, on our way. It's the first story of of the doc here of 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 the yeah. f- the squaring up the news. But before we square up the news, I do want to give a huge shout out to our patrons over at Patreon dot com slash bad bit now of course if we ever got you through a long car ride a long days at work a hard day whatever the case may be if we got you through something it'd be amazing you go over to patreon.com throw a dollar our way it really does help us grow it helps us afford awesome mics like these awesome software we've been improving all year and it's all because of your support we got a new gold patron mr Corey schoedfelder thank you so much and our gold Producers Ryan Grant, Gavin Gottfried, Griffin West, Robbie Bobby Miller himself, our Silver Plus members, Marcus O'Neill, Ray Martinez, JB the Purple Monkey, and Tim Ulf. But also, for some Patreon news for the people Silver Plus uh, members, Ooh. guess what we got? Guess what we got in? Watch this. Just wait. Yeah. Gonna... Uh, video watchers or audio listeners, you need to go over to YouTube to see yeah. the glory. This is a thing right now. Ah. Yeah. I didn't look at how that. safe you're being, dude. Look at socially and distanced. how considerate and empathetic right? you are of others around you by wearing a trophy room official mask. I know what. Now it's not too like. Listen, I'm a heavy dude, so it's it, it covers everything where it needs to. Yeah, but if you're like a normal looking dude, yes. <laughs> yeah, right. You know this this mask is actually pretty dang good. So yeah, if you're a fifteen dollar and up patron, uh, you'll be getting these bad boys in the mail. So I'm really happy yeah, about that. That's awesome. Yeah. So with that, Kyle, listen, enough of us like shilling out, all right? And yeah. selling out as the kids say. We're also way more than six feet away, so you don't have to wear the mask right now. I mean I guess you want to. Here's it's the thing. I, I'm gonna be real. I've been like so every morning I do like a, a mile or two walk. And yeah. sometimes like I catch people walking and I put on my mask just to be safe, and they they mm-hmm. just give me like this guilty look, like oh well, I didn't bring my mask. It's like, well, first off, you shouldn't. Yeah. I'm still waving. You don't need me to spot I'm still going, hey. Yeah. You know? Don't be a dick. Wear your mask. Anyway, Kyle. <laughs> your eyes smile anyway. They should know that. If yeah. they looked into your eyes, your eyes smile. I do the, I do it. I do do like a little like Looney Tunes wink, like <laughs> wink, 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 wink. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Maybe that's the thing. Maybe they're getting peeped out by the blinks. <laughs> that's probably what it is, yeah. <laughs> Kyle, it is time to square. Up the news. What's the first story on the list? Say? Tom Phillips from Eurogamer writes: Fall Guys sold two million Steam copies in a week. Brightly colored battle royale Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout has shifted two million copies on Steam since its launch on August fourth. The game is also currently available on PlayStation Four, where it is part of this month's PlayStation Plus offering. There's no word yet how many people are playing there. Over the weekend, Fall Guys had more than 100,000 people playing on Steam at the same time, more than GTA V, and was doing particularly well on Twitch. Today, publisher Devolver Digital said 23 million minutes of Fall Guys had now been watched on the streaming platform and that the game was now the company's biggest ever launch. This In addition, update. from update. Reset Era... Yeah. 8.2 million copies on PS4. For those that don't know, GameStat or GameStat is a PSN tracker that was made possible by the time Sony gave trophy data. It's generally not super accurate way to tell sales as it can't differentiate between new copies, used copies, and shared copies between accounts. But these factors only start really making a difference over time. So the first week or so, it should be a good measure. Also, used copies don't really apply with Fall Guys, so that's a factor that can't affect the numbers. The game is available for free on PlayStation Plus, but still, those are some great numbers. Wonder at how much they'll end up once the month ends. Back to the article. Quote, it has been overwhelming and humbling to watch the launch and reception of Fall Guys, Mediatonic boss Paul Croft said. We're incredibly grateful to all of our players for their support and have big plans for the game in the future. We're, th- we're thrilled by the response and can't quite believe how beloved our little jelly beans have already become. End quote. Even more to this story, Kyle. Oh, my God. In addition, KFC, Konami, Walmart, and more corporate brands all want Fall Guys crossover skins. This one comes from Will Harrison over at PS Lifestyle. 
Look, good old Colonel Sanders knows a gaming trend when he sees one and hops on it with all the fire and fury that the mascot of a now-deceased chicken mag magnet can muster. It's been hard to avoid the, the hype around the recently released platforming Battle Royale Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout, and brands like the aforementioned KFC, Konami, Walmart, and more went in on the action. The game is rife with potential for dumb crossover skins akin to what we've seen in Fortnite, and now that the Colonel is done invading visual novel dating sims, it's time he tried his hand at Battle Royales. So, there's a lot to unpack here. So, yeah. in the beginning, before I, I got the numbers from Reset Era, the only way to really measure the success, because PlayStation doesn't really show any of the numbers of, you know, how many people are downloading the games on PlayStation Plus. So... The only way is to really see through Steam and two million copies in a week. Now, I I should have asked or looked into this before, but yeah. is this the basic version of Fall Guys, or does this also include the collector's edition? I'm I'm assuming it's it's the whole kit and caboodle. Okay, because yeah. on the Steam page, I think last week uh, the regular one was at number one on the store, and the collector's edition was number two. Yeah, so they had the top two spots. That's nuts. And to even to go even further, seeing the reset era numbers again, put an asterisk at the end of 8 million <laughs> copies. But even then, like, even if it's Jeez. halved, yeah. that's huge. And you're taking Ginormous. a look at the Twitch numbers, right? Mm -hmm. 225,000 people watching on Twitch when I saw yeah. at its height. 23 million minutes have been watched on Twitch. I'm I'm not lying to you here, Kyle. I think you're right. I think this really could be something that could rival a Rocket League. Yeah, like, and not like I've... rival it like they're going toe to toe with each other. No. Like, like a, an indie success on the level of. Mm -hmm. So my question to you, Kyle, is where does Fall Guys go from here? I mean, I, I think it will be really telling when season two starts in yeah. October. Um, I believe October 8th is season two, if I'm not Ooh, Four mistaken. days after my birthday? Um, yeah. Oh, happy birthday to you then. Uh, you. I think it all depends on what mini game modes they keep adding, uh, what holiday stuff we'll get or seasonal content, if the skins mm. are still intriguing enough that what that makes me want to grind for them. Right. Um, I, I think the appeal to this game is just massive. It is yeah. cute. It is charming. It is easy to play, but still very difficult to get that win. Yep. And it is when you look at something like Rocket League, which I compared it to, Rocket League takes like a lot of skill. Yes. A lot. Got to know when to boost and fly in the air and when to fall back in defense. This one is just like you just got to time your jumps. Yeah. Which is like skill, but it's not to the same level and extent. So this there, is very it, open. Like my nieces play this game and have a great time. And it's awesome. It's wholesome. Yeah. It's I so think wholesome. You, you hit on a lot of things there. So like first it's wholesome. Kids are kids kids could get into this. It's something for mm -hmm. everyone. Uh, you know, whether you you are a kid or a squid now, that's a that's a Splatoon <laughs> reference. But nonetheless, <laughs> then you're back to being a kid or a grown ass adult like us. Like I go, I cling to Fall Guys because yeah, it is an escape from like this whole pandemic situation. I'm just a falling yeah. jelly bean. That's all I have to really mm -hmm. focus on. Uh, so like it, it has it has that entry, and then it is. Uh, and I I forget who I was talking to. It could be you, but like. It, it has that Mario Party element where, yeah. you know, it is it all it is really coming down to a bit of dumb luck and a bit of skill at the same exact time, which is surprising because when I look at Fall Guys, this this should have been a Nintendo game that they yeah. that they, they went after. Like speaking of Splatoon, the music is so reminiscent to Splatoon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Like the little dumb modes are very reminiscent to to Mario uh Mario Party, but in a battle royale setting, like there is so much that makes this game a success. And when we're talking about the future of this game, I really do think it it can lend itself to hey, monthly updates. Um, you know, like like Sea of Thieves actually, a Microsoft uh game. They have monthly updates to make sure there's something to go back to uh mm -hmm. to that game to keep it alive. There's no way that they don't have at least like a, a board of of games that they can cycle in and out of that game like we already see one that's coming that's a new final a final uh stage yep. game it was one of my favorites from the beta um mm -hmm. it is jump club and they just kind of 
tweaked what the normal one is and where the the platforms fall out beneath mm. you and mm. it is a double club i believe at the bottom so you Fuck. have to be like it's intense <laughs> but it's 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 better than royal fumble which i have major problems with which yeah. we'll get into very heavily in the road to greatness episode <laughs> <laughs> so here's the deal uh josh milley writes in like you can too over at ps trophy room on twitter or the casa de bad bit discord server and he asks we have seen many companies come out with different skin ideas for fall guys have any stood out to you? And are there any brands you would like to see with skins? So, again, the article above, right? KFC, Konami, Walmart, they all want a piece of this action. Is there, yeah. is there a skin that's, that speaks to you on a spiritual level? Uh, nothing, nothing off the top of my head spiritually, like that deep, but. Yeah. I would love to just have the option to wear a Walmart greeting vest in this game. <laughs> I think that's really funny. And then just wait at the end and just welcome everyone to the goal. Yeah. I think that's fantastic. Um, I think all these companies coming out with their their uh, mock, mock-ups of like costumes for the game are so brilliant. Yeah. I, it, like from gaming chairs to Walmart, like the Colonel. But what I want to see is because they're on PlayStation, I want to see some PlayStation skins. I would love, like, you know, they asked the question of, like, uh, on Twitter, hey, would you like to see Fall Guys on more platforms than this PlayStation PC? Obviously. Oh, uh, yeah. and, and, like, I would love to see kind of like what Fortnite has, where every season there's a new skin that's exclusive to PlayStation. I would love to have that for Fall Guys. Fall Guys needs to be on every platform. Let's be real. Yeah. Like, yeah. I would love to see that on Game Pass. That would be a huge get for Microsoft. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe that'll fill that, that Master Chief void for them. But more so, like, having, like, an Ellie skin or, like, a Shadow of the Colossus skin. Can I tell you? Oh, my God, are. that'd be great. Can I tell you what would be perfect? Let me do, let, let me know. Where's my BB? The BB pod. Oh, <laughs> my <laughs> right? fucking God. God, I would rock yes. that no matter what. I don't care what skin I get. I am the BB Pod that's Stranding. <laughs> yes, that's what I want. I yeah, I, yes, give me that. I I was gonna be like what, like Ratchet or a Clank, and like no, you I mean, hit me yeah. right out of left field. Those were cool. Those those would be excellent, or just like yeah. the Leviathan axe walking around with arms. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the BB pod, Sack I think, Boy. is perfect. Oh, yeah. Sack Boy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that would be really cool for me. I want them to stick to stupid yes. really bad, but I, I would allow this game to take many shapes or forms. Like if Doritos wants to give us a cool ranch chip, because that is the chip <laughs> of the show. It is, it is official. Like Mountain Dew, like a Mountain Dew bottle. Baja oh, yeah. blast it, bro. Like I would love to see that because it's, it, it's chibi and it's cute and it's stupid at the same yeah. exact time. There's been like this discussion of like, do we add Marvel skins? Do we reach out to Disney? Oh. I, I don't want to go that far. You don't want to go. I would. I. I would fucking rock a Iron Man, uh, jelly bean. Are you kidding me? I mean, yeah, but like <laughs> then it just becomes Fortnite. Sure, it but I'm all about these guys games. making as much money as they can. You know? Oh, that for sure. Like, yeah. I, I'm that is to say, like, who knows the next season if the battle pass is going to be a purchase. Right? I, who knows if that's going to be included in the game? I would assume too, and I'll gladly pay it because yeah. it's fun. It's easy to level. You get cool stuff on the way. So, like, hell yeah. Yeah. Now, here's here. You're going to get very passionate. This one, this question's all for you. Gavs Goaty writes uh-huh. in With one trophy on Fall Guys needing you to win five tournaments in a row, is it accurate to say that Fall Guys might be one of the hardest platinums to achieve? Yes. It sucks. Yeah. This is one of my biggest issues with this is the rest of the trophies are so much fun Mm -hmm. and so easy to get because it's all about playing the game. And I can already, the moment I said that, I can hear Sean Capri typing in the Discord. Oh, everyone gets a participation trophy for just playing the game. (laughs) Yeah, But when it comes to this, when it's all about just having fun and it's not so... I think there's like one trophy that I just got for 20 wins. Like mm-hmm. that should be the milestone. And if yeah. you want to go to 50 wins, great. That's a that's a great goal to get to. But to have five tournaments, five tournaments in a row where there's still like disconnection uh, connection issues on the servers, and 
uh, you don't get to choose what the final game is, and it's so heavily weighted for the Royal Fumble one, which yeah. is getting changed. But Hopefully. like it's just and, and and having to rely on your teammates to not screw it up and like steal your tail and the team tail tag <laughs> and ruin the numbers. Like I there, it's difficult. It's not impossible like i see people getting it and i also read of a method that might make it easier but i don't want to say it here until i test it out and hopefully get it myself of course you don't want everybody out like listening in i don't want them to catch wind and then patch it out and then it's it's gone forever but it has something to do with how i got my platinum in the last of us remaster very similar way that way but okay it's a stupidly difficult trophy. It's yeah. the one huge gripe I have with it. Dude, I, but at the end of the day, like, I'm, for me, I'm not thinking about this trophy. I know I'll never get the platinum in this game. I'm just enjoying mm-hmm. it. I'm, I'm loving yeah. all the success this team's getting. For with sure. that, Kyle, we uh, got some real more quick. awesome news. Yes. Shout out to Oliver, the community manager. Oh, my God. For Fall forget? Guys. Uh, I believe it's, I believe it's Fall Guys. Let me find his Twitter account. Yes. Because he needs all the love in the world. Because if you are not following Fall He's Guys on Twitter, I don't know what you're doing. Honestly. Uh, <laughs> Oliver Age 24 on Twitter. J- just genius. Just absolutely genius. He's killing the game over there. Yeah. Rewriting like, how community managers should be running their brand accounts. I'm not I'm not fucking with you. Yes. Like I as, as the as a person who's in that scene, like I'm looking at that uh, and I'm taking notes. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Because like you see a lot of companies try to have personality to their brand, and I think I think uh, Nate from Nestpot said it perfectly. He's just like, "Ugh, it seems so oh, fake." Yeah. But like, like it's... Blockbuster yes. just tweeting like, "Hey, just check it in." Oh, we've seen enough. We're going away. Yeah, like, get out of here, Blockbuster. No one yeah, cares. but there's just <laughs> something so real and genuine and authentic about about the Fall Guys tweets that it yeah. It really does feel like it's a person and not just representing the brand. So big shout out to him. But with that, Kyle, what's the next news we need to square up? From the PlayStation blog itself, The Last of Us Part 2 update adds grounded difficulty and permadeath mode and more. Number one, grounded difficulty returns plus the new permadeath mode. For veteran The Last of Us fans, grounded difficulty represents the ultimate test of skill. This difficulty raises the stakes by not only making enemies deadlier and ammo upgrade and crafting materials incredibly scarce, but also removing invaluable tools for survival, such as disabling listen mode, deactivating elements of the HUD, and more. Beginning with the update, Grounded will become one of the base difficulty options available when starting the story, so you won't need to have beaten the game once already to access it. Number two, new graphics, audio, and gameplay modifiers. Have you ever wondered what The Last of Us Part Two would look like as a cel-shaded adventure, or if it was made in the retro 8-bit era? How about if it was a black-and-white noir thriller or sepia tone classic? With this week's update, we're adding nearly 30 new graphics rendering modes, as well as several new audio modifiers that allow you to change the look and feel of the game. We're also debuting new unlockable gameplay modifiers like One Shot or Touch of Death that enables one-hit kills or infinite ammo, infinite crafting, or infinite listen mode range to add a new twist to gameplay. Wow. So, again, like two months after this game's re- release, we're mm-hmm. still getting some pretty cool little updates. And it kind of Classic show, Naughty Dog. Yeah, it's classic, classic Naughty Dog. Classic Naughty Dog. It also kind of gives me the illusion of like, Maybe this was something that was supposed to be there at launch that they wanted to debut but couldn't. Sure. You know? Yeah. Uh, Rigo writes in on Twitter. Uh, he asks, with The Last of Us Part 2 update, what will be the first thing you will do? Permadeath mode or grounded mode? Kyle, this goes to you because you're just like, I'm going back in. Yeah, I'm going back in. I have to match my remastered 100% trophy list, so I have to do it. Um, I think I'm going to go grounded first. Okay. Uh, the reason why is I believe you can do permadeath on whatever difficulty you want. So you're doing it on grounded? No. Uh, w- oh. What I'm saying is you can do permadeath, I think, on very light difficulty uh... to make it easier on you. I don't know if it's tied. I, I'm i just – the way it was worded made me think you can do it on whatever difficulty yeah. you wanted. Yeah. So if that's uh, the case, you're going to do very light on if that. The, if that's the case, I want to run through the story and really focus on grounded. Okay. And then – I'll know where all the big dangers that I need to watch out for, uh, for permadeath after that, while it's fresh in my mind, and then just plow right through it. Yeah. 
Uh, Hopefully. For I'll, me, I'll die to that giant thing in the, the hospital <laughs> basement, and then I'll be done. The Rat King? <gasps> oh. <laughs> Fuck the Rat King, dude. <laughs> Not even just the Rat King. It's the... I don't want to spoil too much, but the thing that breaks off of the Rat King. <laughs> <laughs> Uh uh-uh, uh no I'm not. no I think I'm good I'm not gonna do e- either of these I just want to check out all the graphical renderings because like they give you uh, snapshots of like what the game looks like in all these different modes I am so curious to see what this game looks like in 16 bit yeah like we saw it's like a little like shell like not shell shaded but it's it's kind of like when you were like you know nine year or you know nine or 12 years old and it's like 11 o'clock at night and you turned on the tv that type of stuff you yes. know what i'm talking about the, the channel static. 80 you know the channel oh. 80, you know what i'm talking about that's uh, what yeah. it kind of looks I like gotcha. <laughs> you know that kind of weird overlay yeah that's right you have you sick ha, ha, have have one eye on the on the door and the ear <laughs> to noises coming up the stairway yeah I get yeah, it. yeah 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 you I get, get it. it yeah we're cool we're cool <laughs> here's here's the thing there are so many millennials or, or gen zers whatever they're called like kids that are like you know like 21 they're like what is they talking about they like, did you have an ipad like no we didn't no, we had that we no had idea. A, Oof, we had to do no crazy idea. things. We had anyway. we had in my house. We had yeah. one of those boxes that circumvented cable, so we would still get all the ca- channels, even though we didn't pay the outrageous premium services when I was a kid. Yeah, that was the only way I could watch like Nickelodeon and Disney, and and, and and like watch sports. So like, and Channel Eighty, like that. That was yeah. <laughs> and this one's for the kids. We had a Panasonic TV that was made out of wood. Hell yeah, wood paneling. Mm-hmm. Wood paneling, son. That thing weighed a million pounds. <laughs> I think it came with the foundation of the house. <laughs> TVs with knobs to turn channels and volume. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's right. I go, I go way back. Remember, like, there's like, like, say something that'll date you as a gamer. Everybody's like channel three. I'm like, oh, no. yes, that's mine. <laughs> no knob on TV. All right, get mm-hmm. on my level. <laughs> Let's not even do that. The little, the little coax cable. That's TV game. That's where we're going here. Yep, absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, I would love to see that, like what it looks like in 16-bit, what the sounds look in 16-bit. I just want to v- visit. I've already gotten the plat. I'm not I'm not too, you know, whatever. I'm going back and beating it again for a third or fourth time. Uh, Nagachaka Chaka, writes in, with lethal difficulty added to Ghost of Tsushima and grounded difficulty coming to Last of Us Part 2, what's your favorite difficulty uh, to play games on? My best friend only plays games on the hardest difficulty where I like to start off on standard and will bu- bump it up if it's too easy. Where do you like to go? Where do you like to play? It's always on standard. Normal, yep. whatever. I Even if I feel like it's too easy for me, I rarely bump it up. I'm not that type of gamer. I want to experience the story and have fun doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, if if it's a game that I truly love, and like The Last of Us Remastered and Last of Us Part Two, then I will 100% see what Grounded is all about. Yeah, because after I played it in the on remaster, that is the way to play The Last of Us games. <laughs> like uh, no listen mode. Everything is scarce, and it's. It's truly terrifying, but it feel it's so rewarding. Much like Makes the sense. Final Fantasy VII remake hard playthrough, like it's so rewarding. Mm-mm. For me, it's normal if I'm playing, of course, like a Souls game. It's always bumped up to hard. I always like saying this though, like yeah, I'll bump it up if it's feeling too easy for me. Like Jedi Fallen Order, I didn't know I was playing on the on. I think it was the actual hard difficulty. I was getting my ass kicked. I thought that was normal. So, um, yeah, there are some games that I've played on hard, not realizing they're hard, but most of the time, excuse me, I'm going on normal and I'm just experiencing the story. And then once I beat it, if I really, really like it, yeah, I'll amp that shit up. I'll put it to new game plus mode, which, Mm -hmm. uh, Ghost of Tsushima, give me a new game plus mode. Uh, with that, that's all the the last of us news, Kyle. Oh boy. (sighs) This one's a big one guys. Oh boy. This is a new segment that comes along with this topic. Hold on, hold on. Okay, are you shopping? Pause for in? a second. You okay. Uh I'm changing the color of my background to sing- signify what what gaming Whoa. ecosystem we're about to talk to. Let's Whoa. go green, baby. Whoa. Okay, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Jonathan Dornbush from IGN writes 
Halo Infinite delayed to 2021. Microsoft has announced that Halo Infinite has been delayed from its planned holiday 2020 launch to an unspecified 2021 release date. That means the upcoming Halo sequel with 343 Industries or from 34 Industries will not launch alongside the Xbox Series X as Xbox had previously planned. Xbox did not confirm a new release window other than next year for Halo Infinite, explaining that the delay comes as the, quote, result of multiple factors that have contributed to development challenges, including the ongoing COVID-related impacts affecting us all this year, end quote. Microsoft's full statement on the delay of Halo Infinite reads, quote, Today I want to share an important Halo Infinite development update with the community. We have made the difficult decision to shift our release to 2021 to ensure the team has adequate time to deliver a Halo game experience that meets our vision. The decision to shift our release is a result of multiple factors that have contributed to development challenges, including the ongoing COVID-related impacts affecting us all this year. I want to acknowledge the hard work from our team at 343 Industries, who have remained committed to making a great game and finding solutions to development challenges. However, it is not sustainable for the well-being of our team or the overall success of the game to ship it this holiday. We know this will be disappointing to many of you, and we all share in that sentiment. The passion and support the community has shown over the years has been incredible and inspiring. We wanted nothing more than to play our game with the community this holiday. The extra time will let us finish the critical work necessary to deliver the most ambitious Halo game ever at the quality we know our fans expect. Thank you for your support and understanding. End quote. Wow. Now, you might say, Joe, why are we talking about this on a PlayStation podcast? Joe, why are we talking about this on a PlayStation podcast? Well, first, because we're gamers first. And secondly, yeah. uh, this this has huge implications for everybody this holiday season. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, it has the biggest implications on Microsoft. But when we take a look at PlayStation right now, it, it kind of, they have... They, Carp launch. They, yeah. They they can run the game, you know, like Jay-Z and Rihanna. Yeah. So to, they to me, literally are to me. This is how I picture before you continue. Yeah, go for it. I picture Mister Mister Sony, uh, yeah. Herman Hulse, or or Jim Ryan, just sitting there at the desk, and to the side is this red button that says "Press to unload all the news," <laughs> and he's just waiting, and it's hovering over it. He's just waiting for the perfect time, and I can expect that to happen any day now after this. This um. Yeah, this has implications of what the, at least the first half of this next generation is going to look like mm-hmm. for everyone. So let's introduce a little new segment um, called Let's Fill in the Blanks. We're Phil Spencer right now, gang. We just lost the biggest exclusive due to COVID. What are you feeling? I, I mean, even before we get into fill in the blanks, how are you feeling about this, Kyle? As a gamer... As a PlayStation gamer. Yeah. And then if you're Phil Spencer. Uh, <laughs> and <classic> so, Phil Spencer. <laughs> as a gamer, I am 100% bummed. Yeah. I I, I want to see Xbox hit it out of the park at launch with what is arguably the best franchise they have. Best IP they have. The one that makes Xbox gamers Xbox gamers. That is Halo. That is Master Chief. And the fact that it's launching or it's not launching with the Series X after being said like we need to launch with our biggest hit hitter is ex- incredibly uh, frustrating. Yeah. Now as a PlayStation gamer, I am, I am bummed. Like I was looking forward to playing that game, but selfishly I'm excited that I have more time to dive into the Halo series from beginning to end. Sure. So I don't feel like I have to rush through them and neglect some other stuff. And then if I'm Phil, I'm just shaking my head. I'm like we need to do something to make up for it. Whether that is get one of these third-party exclusives that they feel like they're hands-off and they're washing their hands of that whole exclusive business, uh, yeah. at least for a little bit. Or do what I think you're, what Sean is hoping for. And it's like, hey, what up, CD Projekt Red? How about that Game Pass? I mean, that's like kind of the only thing I feel like. Yeah, it is... So as a gamer, I'm bummed. Uh, you know, I say this all the time. I, I love Halo. I am unabashedly a Halo fan. I want this game to always do well. You know, I, I was a, his, I'm a, I was a, I am a Hispanic kid. <laughs> when I was a little Hispanic kid looking up at the Master Chief, I saw myself in that helmet. Uh, Master Chief means a lot to me. 
reason why I'm a gamer today. Blah, blah, blah. You heard it here before. So I am incredibly disappointed. Uh, in insert the Miyamoto quote, quote where like, you know, mm-hmm. a, a delayed game is a delayed game, but bad games forever type of thing. But it does go to show why I'm still a PlayStation gamer is because Microsoft has still not figured out this publishing thing. And that's it. like, it, you know, just looking at it, just like seeing it like yet another, this is their flagship and seeing the stories from, from what we've heard uh, from pl- people like Jason Schreier and the rumors throughout the last few months of just like, this thing's been in development hell. They switched engines uh, midway through uh, development. They've lost a creative lead. They've lost a narrative lead uh, a year before this game was supposed to be coming out. So it seems like 343, after the third game, still doesn't have their ducks in a row. And that's really disappointing to hear. Uh, and I hope those things aren't true for the most part, right? Like, the one thing that I think before we need we start cheering as the PlayStation fans is understand what Jason Schreier said today, which was, they're still crunching. You know, a delay does not mean they're still not crunching. They're crunching mm-hmm. even more. Mm-hmm. And these people are sacrificing so much to give you something that I hope they're very passionate about. So as a gamer, I'm disappointed, but I understand 343, take your time. And if I'm looking at Microsoft going, yikes, what what does your first six months roadmap now look like? Because now it is barren. Like, we could talk about Game Pass all you want, but Game Pass, I can get on my Xbox right now, right? Mm-hmm. I think it speaks to what Microsoft is trying to to do, which is like, who who needs generations? Play wherever you want. Play on your Galaxy tab, um, which cool. Like, And I think what Luke Lore said of the Xbox expansion pass is, is going to ring true here. It's just like, we're testing out that theory in real time. Uh, so now I'm Phil Spencer, and we need to f- literally fill in the blanks here. I think you're totally right. I think, you know, Jeff Grubb alluded to it on Twitter. He was just like, expect Microsoft to do something crazy. Now Microsoft has to go out to a developer and a publisher or both and going, all right, how long can we lock down this game? Mm -hmm. And their wallets are completely open. And every developer and every publisher knows that now when they're negotiating with Xbox, uh, with Phil Spencer, they have the leverage. Because if, you know, let's just say, let's just say, we'll throw Cyberpunk in there just to make Sean happy. If Microsoft goes, okay, Cyberpunk day and date game pass, three hundred million Cyberpunk, bam, you know, like Ooh. they can't, they can't, they can't talk a, a big game. They need that game, and at yeah. the same time, those developers, those publishers, don't give a shit about Game Pass because they give a shit about those day one numbers. Mm-hmm. So they they have to supplement that income. So they're going to have to pay big money. Now, does this? And here's here's where I throw it over to you. We're going to talk about WB in a second. Yeah. Do they come back to that? conversation with wb going hey listen yeah. we need shit here's yeah. how many billion bam <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, like, yeah start throwing out that cash is it is it by acquiring studios or is it by acquiring the ip that you get that goodwill back from your consumer base i think i think acquiring studios at this point is kind of like hollow like it's not mm-hmm. going to do much for you at launch Right. I think they're just they need to focus on the short term and, and really fill that gap because it the Xbox Series X is looking like what the PS4 launch was. It Got was barren. Yeah. It was and for for a very long time. And who knows when Halo Infinite is coming in twenty twenty one. Yeah. So like they didn't it, say early twenty twenty one, they didn't they say just mid. said twenty twenty one. So it's it's really, really barren. And and that is they need some sort of third party deal, I would not be shocked if they're like, hey, WB, what's up? Can we get, like, I don't know, Injustice 3, you know, exclusive on Xbox or Batman? I'll say it. Like, that would be a wise mood for them, but I don't know if they already have a deal with PlayStation at this point. And so that's like- the thing. I think what you, like, there was a report out going, yeah, Microsoft, like, Microsoft's plan this generation was make Mixer a thing and promote games via their streaming service, and that would give them the revenue to mm-hmm. to promote on, on their platform. That didn't work out for them. And so now what you're seeing is what they're, they've gone to developers and publishers, and they've already made deals with PlayStation. Yeah. And so 
now we're Shuhei Yoshida. They say he's only the indies guy, right, over there at PlayStation. Yeah. But we know he's so much more. He's practically mm-hmm. the gosh dang Illuminati behind that smile. <laughs> the oh, is a stern. I look. see you shoe racking up those Fall Guy wins, by the way. Yep, I see you yep. with those crowns. He's giving me tips, uh, <laughs> yeah. tricks, and all that type of stuff. So you're Shuhei Yoshida. Now you run PlayStation. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wink, wink, mm-hmm. nudge, nudge. Well, how am I feeling? How am I feeling right now? How does Halo's delay affect me, Mr. Uh, Bags? I feel ecstatic. Yeah. I f- I feel like the only reason to buy an Xbox Series X is now a next year problem. And now it's just all aboard the PS5 train. Like it feels like they made the consumer's choice for them already if they're going to get a next gen system. They're coming to us at PlayStation. What else what else is the next generation going to give them on Series X as of right now? Yeah. I think if you're selling them uh, if you're selling boxes and that's your mission statement, um, I like, I'm not buying a series X at launch anymore. I don't need mm-hmm. to, I got student loans and now taking a look at the PlayStation five launch, I was like, okay, now I got even deeper pockets for you, buddy. Let's do this. Hey, let's, well, let's buy those let, outrageous headphones. Let you know? me be uh Mr. Devil's advocate here. Okay. Are we expecting or thinking that this could also happen to PlayStation? Is miles Morales going to get a delay? The reason why I think not is because Miles Morales is A, a smaller title, Mm -hmm. and B, running on the same engine. You know, you could talk a lot of shit about Miles Morales being a glorified DLC. Talk about all the shit you want, fine, if that's your talking point. Not me, to be clear. What's that? Not me. No, 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 no. No, no, I'm not talking shit. Internet crowds, that's what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do it. Listen, you wipe my memory (laughs) to play Spider-Man again. I'll get 500 bucks right now on the table. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, so, you know, Maz Morales, I don't think, like, I think, let me walk this back. Halo's mm-hmm. problem is midway through development, they ditched an engine to create their own. And then COVID happened and then created, well, before COVID happened, creative teams left. So they have all these tools, all these assets, creator, uh, creative, new creative leads have to come in there to solve the past creative leads problems. And mm-hmm. then COVID happens. And now you kind of get to see Craig the Brute kind of looks now actually fucked up, right? Mm-hmm. So that's Microsoft's problem. When you take a look at Miles Morales, and listen, knock on wood, knock on all types of material. Miles Morales, they, they talked about it. This is a modified version of the of the engine they already have. A lot of the assets, excuse me again, a lot of the assets they already have, they have Manhattan, right? Like they have the same animations for moves that Miles has and Spider-Man has or mm-hmm. what other villains. Now they're kind of just playing with ideas at this point. So, and building upon the success of, of the original via, you know, the mechanics and whatnot. So... T- they're just experimenting with new ideas, not new engine and new tools as much, I would assume, as someone that knows Jack all with development. So I think Miles is in a lot better shape. But I do think that's why Sony's been so silent. It's not because they're classy right now. Like Jim mm-hmm. Ryan is not sitting back going, oh, yes, he kind of is. He's, he's timid of doing that because this could happen to them. Like, yeah. what, like, so someone could spill the coffee on a PC, mm-hmm. and, and Miles Morales is no nowhere to be found. Oh my God! Yeah, you know, yeah. So I think they don't want to jinx it, and they want to be, they they want to be polite because if this happens to them, I don't think they would want Microsoft to do this. Like if the shoe was on the other foot, <laughs> pun intended, um, like would Microsoft be a dick about it? I would. I don't think so. I don't think so one bit. So I think they're giving them yeah. the, the courtesy. I, I think the 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 Twitter one upmanship that we talked about last week about like hey all our controllers will work on Series X and yeah. the Dual Shock whatever like that banter stuff is fine even though just shut up and tell me the dates and price whatever <laughs> yeah but I don't think they'll stoop ever that low to be like oh don't have a game at launch we have plenty like yeah. none none of that they're not gonna. Get I think the buck stops at at those little silly punches. Yes, for the most part, and I would hate it to see if if PlayStation. Mm-hmm. And I've seen some very shitty things. Don't be a dick. Um, you know, if 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 PlayStation was like, hey, you'll get to experience Miles Morales, you know, and not the Master Chief, you know, like something stupid. 
Uh, yeah. But like, if I'm if I'm the Master Chief, I feel very depressed. <laughs> <laughs> Cortana, <laughs> give me my Let's Pro. Like it's, it's just, it. I feel like bummed out about it because, again, like I feel like this generation, and and this is the last topic. We'll move on. Um, but I feel like the beginning of this generation, or beginning of the hype for for this next gen, if you could call it that, was all Microsoft. They were saying all the right things that we were getting. I was getting flustered, right? Of like, yeah. why isn't Sony saying anything? Sony mm-hmm. talk. Sony, why aren't you talking? And now seeing it, it's it's because Sony's talking when they absolutely know they have something. At least that's the feeling I have there. It's like mm-hmm. they're talking if as long as they're one hundred percent sure that this thing is happening. Like all those games shown, we know only Miles Morales is true holiday. You know? The rest of those games don't have release dates because they're not here to promise you anything because of COVID. So mm-hmm. I think it's a, it, I think the shoe is now on the other foot when it comes to PlayStation. I now think hindsight 2020. Yeah. Sony was right not to talk because now we're kind of seeing like smart deliveries being in question. Like it's, it's not as, as grand as, as some may seem. We're mm-hmm. seeing like games like Halo huge touted games being delayed and now all of a sudden the showcase feels empty uh and then you still have the questions that need to be answered like how much is this thing's price and why do i need to go out here and buy what it could be uh if digital foundries says it could be up to a 600 hundred dollar console right mm-hmm. because now that showcase let's be real about the xbox showcase now hindsight they didn't show us anything at this point and, ne- mm-hmm. and again, neither of them have done a great job selling us these consoles because they've been so timid. So yeah. to me, I now think, yeah, it was actually better that Sony didn't wasn't so bold. I don't know if if you feel the same. How your feelings are now that we've seen kind of Halo get Thanos? Yeah, I'm. <laughs> uh, second shout out to Thanos this episode. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I I agree with you. Like. It was incredibly frustrating for most of this year so far in 2020 with Still all is. the stuff going on. Yeah, well, yeah. with all the stuff going on and knowing that PS5 was is coming out this holiday and not hearing anything until, like, what, last month? Mm-hmm. A month and a half ago? Incredibly frustrating. But now seeing it, seeing the backlash with, with Xbox realizing that they might not be able to pro- hit on all their promises, I'm okay with them not having to do a retraction yeah, uh, of them being absolutely 100% confident when they come out and, and give the info to us and when, when we can buy. I also can imagine, I would say maybe in the next two, three weeks, we'll hear yeah. about it for yeah. sure. I, I, I definitely think at this point things are in flux for Microsoft because they are now going and scrambling to, to, to patch this very big hole in their ship. And Sony is still not confident in the price. I very much think like, yes, Xbox. I mean, I think at this point, Xbox can undercut them on price. And it's not the worst thing in the world for PlayStation because there's, I'm sorry, I'm going to sound like a dick. I don't want to, but lack of better words, there's, there are the apps that you want to play on PlayStation, whereas mm-hmm. Halo is now gone. What are we doing? We're we buying a $500 system for the medium. I don't think so. No offense to the medium game looks dope. I'm going to buy day one on PS5. So to me, PlayStation's walking in, even just looking at it now going, okay, just knowing that Miles and Morales is there, Death Loops there, um, and then knowing Bug Snacks. Fucking bug fine. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm giving you Jesus. Leave me alone. <laughs> um, but like seeing seeing what PlayStation has right now, it hurts that Microsoft yet again out there about to hit a grand slam and they fucking with it. And yeah. PlayStation now I mean, if those rumors are correct, it could be just rumors, but they have talked to almost everybody shaking hands, making those deals for not just the first six months, but the next two to three years. Um, That's huge. And I think that that's a PlayStation walks in now with the momentum they've already had and say, and like, let's just say whatever deal they have with Call of Duty, whatever deal they have with like Mass Effect or EA, whatever their EA's big fall game is going to be, whether they do also have the rights to Batman, like the sky's the limit for PlayStation to just walk in here and just go, holiday season's ours. 
And that's not to stroke our egos or, or, or PlayStation's ego, because I really do think that Microsoft, um, in the next few weeks, we're going to have another major reason why Game Pass is awesome and, and the best value in games. I do think that, you know, now having developers in, in the control of, of the negotiations, knowing that, you know, they need to fill that, that Master Chief level hole in their ship. You know, that's, that is a power position for indies, for double A, for triple A. So I think Microsoft has the money to fill this, this, this hole that they have. But yeah, they're, they're not in as strong as a position as I would love them to be. But mm-hmm. it is what it is. It, it's, yeah. it's going to be interesting how this next six months rolls out without the chief there. Very interesting, for sure. And yeah. again, I wish the best for that team. With that, let's get to the next bit of news. We're running a little long, but let's do it. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta change my color. Oh, okay. What are we? What color. are we changing the color now to? We're talking about control, so I think red. Mm-hmm. That's like exactly red. what I was gonna do. Ooh, there we go. Oh, now you look control like control will. <laughs> Joe Scrabbles from IGN writes: Control will only get a free next gen upgrade from the new Ultimate Edition. Existing owners of Control on console won't get a free upgrade to its PS5 or Xbox Series X versions, but those who buy a new Ultimate Edition will. The Ultimate Edition was announced today and will be released on Steam on August 27th, followed by Epic Game Store, PS4, and Xbox One versions on September 10th. It will come with all previous upgrades in both of the game's expansions. Alongside that announcement came the news that those who bought the console versions of the Ultimate Edition will get a free digital upgrade to the PS5 and Xbox Series X versions of the game when they arrive, but those who already own the game on console will not. A product FAQ for the Ultimate Edition makes clear that, quote, the free upgrade path to Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 version of Control is only available for Control Ultimate Edition. The FAQ also confirms that the next-gen versions of the game will arrive digitally by the end of 2020. The most famous Seamus I've ever, I've ever known in my whole entire life. Uh-huh. And that's a fact. You can look it up in Wikipedia. Yeah. He writes in. So... You have to buy Control Ultimate Edition to upgrade the game for Xbox Series X and PS4. Oh, sorry, he means PS5. Don't worry, Seamus, I got your back. All famous people make mistakes. How do you guys feel about this? Honestly, it feels like a real slap in the face to everyone who bought the game when it came out as a phone call happens. Come on, (laughs) Apple. I told you not to do any of that, and you're you're being silly. So, yeah, with the Ultimate Edition, you know, being or the upgrade being locked behind a paywall, which is the ultimate edition. Kyle, how, how do you feel? Because you were pumped when we saw th- that state of play with the Al- Alan Wake stuff, you were really high, high on this, on this DLC and playing it on PS five. You're, you're looking at me sad. <laughs> I'm, I'm extremely bummed and upset. Uh, I don't like saying this phrase since it's been thrown around widely in the last few weeks. Uh, especially by me on the last couple episodes. But if you want to talk anti-consumer, here it is, I feel like. Uh, yeah. the, the fact that nobody, well, I won't say nobody. I was up there for one of the people championing for this game, for people to play this game. Whatever yeah. it came up on this show, I was like, please play Control. Buy Control. It deserves your time. And the fact that because I am a first-day adopter beating the drum for why this game is so awesome for so long, I'm going to get locked out from a free upgrade for next gen. And I have to buy this ultimate edition when I already have the DLC season pass and and regular game already. Like it it just, it's a, it's a feel like it's a slap in the face. And the fact that they did this so close to the next gen versions yeah, like it, like it's so close to them. Where like I know a couple of people who bought the DLC packs for the base game a couple of days ago after the state of play trailer, and now knowing that this is coming and they won't get carried over unless you get this ultimate edition, which has the same stuff. Like it's blowing my mind, and this is one hundred percent, I believe, a five hundred five issue and Do not you think? A remedy. I, I I think it. Some of it has to go to Remedy because they should have said something, I feel like. But I think this is a 505 publishing thing. I think no matter who it is, it sucks. And like yeah, to see like so. this Ultimate Edition that is, first off, 
I feel like it would have been maybe a little bit better if you bought this at launch. But like, mm-hmm. this is a new version of the game. Like, for thirty bucks, are you are you fucking kidding me? Like, that's mm-hmm. my initial reaction. Like, it doesn't matter if this is five hundred five because like Remedy couldn't go out there and go, "Hey, this was five hundred five's idea." <laughs> Not oh, ours. yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Like, they got to own this shit either way. And it is mm-hmm. a huge slap in the face if you are a Remedy fan who's been with them through thick and through thin to, to see this shit. I mean, yeah, there's been, look, there's been bullshit that people outside the PlayStation ecosystem have to deal with, with, you know, the bullshit exclusivity of the DLC for PlayStation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I like, if you're... If you're an Xbox faithful and you've been with them since, you know, um, Max Payne or, or or not even Max was Max Payne on Xbox. I feel like that I believe it was PS2 Xbox. Okay. I re- only remember it PS2 because uh, we're, we're good people here in my house. Anyway, like if if you're an Xbox faithful, you've been with them through, uh, you know, Max Payne. You've been with them through Alan Wake. It's a part of this universe, and then you Quantum get Break. Over by, yeah, Quantum Break. You get dicked over by this DLC, and then the bigger slap in the face is like, and now thirty bucks, little man. Put that shit in my hand. I'm like, no, thank you. Automatically turned off. Automatically not buying this DLC until they change it. If not, I don't have to play this dlc that's how i feel i'm not gonna boycott you know the game if you've never experienced it go out there buy this 30 dollars game mm-hmm. but i can't in good faith for anybody who is you know who already bought the game don't support this this is garbage this is bad you know but hey control 2 is gonna be dope and if there is that. control 2 Ooh. I, I would hope so that's what it's called. <laughs> controlled uh, with the ed in like parentheses let's talk let's talk about the last story <laughs> on the list here uh samuel tolbert from windows central writes warner brothers interactive entertainment remains part of at&t and is it being sold yet Reports over the last couple of months have indicated that Warner Media parent company AT&T is interested in selling Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment, a gaming division that comprises studios such as Rocksteady Games, NetherRealm Studios, Monolith Productions, and more. Activision Blizzard, Electronic Arts, Microsoft, and Take-Two Interactive were all reported parties interested in potentially purchasing the unit for anywhere from $2 billion to $4 billion. Now it seems like that isn't happening, at least right now. In a letter to all Warner Brothers employees, Warner Media CEO Jason Kalar outlined his plan for organizing the company moving forward. While much of this has to do with elevating the role of HBO Max and making some changes to the company's structure, Kalar explicitly notes that the gaming division will remain part of Warner Media. He writes that, quote, Warner Brothers Interactive remains part of the studios and networks group alongside several other brands that are all focused on engaging fans with our brands and franchises through games and other interactive experiences, end quote. Now, it's important to keep in mind that doesn't mean things won't change in the future. AT&T may have backed off from hoping to sell the gaming unit, or a deal may simply have not been reached yet. We'll have to wait and see what the future holds, but at least in the short term, the WB Games division remains a part of Warner Media. Man, what a packed show. <laughs> oh man! I knew, roller I knew a, the roller coaster <laughs> of emotions. If you're a PlayStation fan, you had happy fun news, right? With Fall Guys and Last of Us. Then we mm-hmm. had this whole Halo topic. Then we got the roller coaster control. We had a, we had a story about a, like battery of the DualShock. I just tossed that out. This is this is yeah. bigger than this. <laughs> this is bigger than than a okay battery life on, on a controller. This is huge. Uh, yeah, Kyle. Uh, do you feel safe and sound now that, because the rumor has it, for those of you who are walking in for the first time, the buyers, uh, that WB Games was going to be sold either to EA, oh God, Activision, oh Jesus, no, take two, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, please, no, uh, or Microsoft, right, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Um. You know, there have been talks over the weeks of like, what happens if Batman's a xbox exclusive they take this and they they go it's ours uh we have to take that we have to keep that same energy because yep spider-man's in marvel's avengers we have to be okay with that playstation people yeah but now with this news kyle how do you actually feel (laughs) uh i i feel like i'm in a boxing match Uh and the bell rang and we're in between rounds Mm. like i feel like i was just about to get knocked out 
and now I'm safe for a little bit, but I know pretty soon I'm going to have to get back in there and take some punches. Like, I feel like it's, I don't feel like it's over. I, I I think maybe in the short term, maybe six months, I think we'll be safe. I think once these, the rock city game and, and the nether realm game and whatever, WB Montreal is doing, you cowards. Uh, with, with Batman, take the night. What are you doing? Yeah. Um, hopefully we'll know all that in 10 days at, at DC Fandom. And then once those games come out, then I think we'll have another round of all right, WB games. What, what, uh, where are we going? What are we doing with it? <laughs> you guys, I, you saw my face because I lit up and you got scared. Yeah, for a you're second. like, huh, what? I forgot. <laughs> I don't know. Did we talk about... Did we talk about Injustice, or sorry, um, uh, no no spoilers there. We don't know if Injustice is there. I didn't break any NDA. You can't sue me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if just luck and happenstance. Uh, the only we NDAs about- we have is like what we have for lunch and what we yeah. tell each other. Those <laughs> yeah. are the only secret conversations we have. What was that? <laughs> it was Chipotle. But like <laughs> Suicide Squad, did we even talk about that last week? There's been so much news. Oh so man, Rocks- you know what? I think we I think we missed that. That's how much news it. So with this announcement, we have Rocksteady coming out saying, "Hey, our new game is Suicide Squad and the poster is of Superman st- like like standing and a the the symbol for Suicide Squad, the logo. Dope logo. Dope logo because it's logo. a fucking sight. It's like a scope sight. And the C head. and the U are interchangeable for Suicide Squad. Daddy's so excited. Why? Especially if you zoom in on Superman's face and it looks like something's wrong with him. Yeah. Looks like he's like bizarro Superman or he's drugs. He's he's I he's under control. Honestly, I think it's the perception of like what like I'm a villain, I'm playing a villain, so oh, that's, how, and that's how they see Superman? Exactly. Okay. I see yeah. that. Right. They see through the lies of the Jedi. Um <laughs> but and I turned on Siri. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Siri, are you telling us something? <laughs> what is this? Some kind of suicide squad, Siri? Yeah. What what are we? Part of the Patsies? <laughs> some type of suicide squad. Dot 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 dot. But no, it was with the it was with the, the Anakin line. So he's like <laughs> I don't feel safe right now. It's some dark power shit. But um but yeah, like with this news of Warner not looking for a buyout, I think you're totally right. I think it, we're not out of the woods yet. I think they're going to sadly seems like make this company more lean and more attractive for the people that want to buy this. And that means people are going to get let go. And that really Mm -hmm. sucks. Mm -hmm. And when we take a look at like the suicide squad, uh, whatever the rumored Batman game is, um, and whatever nether realms working up that will be announced next week, you know, these games, I think Warner's looking at it, the bigger picture here. Uh, they've definitely been approached for a, a marketing deal. I mean, there's no way around it. Absolutely. If you're making a Batman game, you're going to, you're going to have people knocking on your door. So also I think- the, the Lego Star Wars saga thing that we're supposed to get this year too is also Do it. a major, major piece. Yeah. That marketing deals and, and whatnot. So when you're taking a look at that, you're Warner going, okay, we need to maximize profits as uh, how, however much we can. Uh, let's try to get all the money for these deals that we can, so we don't have to pay for the marketing and we can help, you know, pay for the, for the development of these games to maximize profits. Why try to sell off those games? And if those games do really good, it makes us, uh, uh, uh for a buyer makes us way more attractive to them. So all they're seeing is what these IPs can do for them while at the same time getting us the income we need right now. So I think you're totally right. I definitely think that this is just a uh, for the moment, like for the next six months to a year. And then once the major games are out and those in, in you know, rock studies making suicide squad DLC and, and what Batman Montreal comes out, whatever that is, he's French now. <laughs> Uh, he's French Canadian. <laughs> ho ho, they get, they get, the <laughs> <Le> Joker. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do a Joker voice in a French accent, but like, nonetheless, I think that pays. That's going to pay dividends for them, and I think they're going to return to this later on as time mm-hmm. goes by. I wonder if new people step up to the plate, 
or the same folks step up to the plate with a bigger, bigger, you know, sack of money. But yeah. it's going to be really interesting. And I can't wait to see what Suicide Squad, what Batman and all the other games that we don't know that are going to get announced here uh, at the uh, DC fandom, what they're I going to look so like. So excited. I am yeah. so excited. This is b- beyond the PS5 show and and learning more about ps5 this is the thing i was looking forward to most this summer i want to see these superhero games that i love so much rocksteady who i have at the highest pedestal when it comes to game developers i want to see what that game is i want to know if it's just as good as all the arkham games that i played beforehand real talk about this if it's a games in service uh mm, i'm okay with it yeah because i like rocksteady yeah but it's not preferred yeah i listen as long as the gameplay is fun yeah it seems like if it's a games of service i'm creating my own villain which would be super dope and then you can destinify it like like you have harley quinn there you have like the joker there like Mm -hmm, in the hall mm -hmm. of uh, of injustice or whatever like uh like that would be really awesome. That you're yeah. having the main villains kind of like being the vanguard <laughs> in Destiny. That would be a really cool take that I'd be willing to see. Uh, and yeah, yeah Rocksteady's so talented. So I definitely think Warner's looking at this, even if they're not looking at a buyout situation of going, okay, how can we like, let's just say Monolith, you make a Game of Thrones you know, mm-hmm. uh, game and then taking your HBO franchises, you know, I know like insecure is getting a mobile phone game. Like what about like making a euphoria, like, um, mm. mobile experience or don't nod like exp- experience. I think that's an awesome thing that Warner could do on the offset. If they don't want to sell and, and become the, the whole Marvel thing where you're just licensing the IP to, to, to folks, but yeah, it, it's going to be interesting. I'm happy right now that, mm-hmm. Batman is where he he belongs on the PlayStation platform for now. <laughs> for now. For now. I am. For now. But I'm keeping mm-hmm. that energy. When it actually happens, I'm going to be like, great for Microsoft. Claps for you. Cla- like, Nancy Pelosi golf clap. Good. <laughs> uh, and, and we'll be on with it. But yeah. it's awesome to see that we can actually put a, a pin in this story, at least for a little while. Yes. Kyle. Man, this this week, man. <sighs> was not, I was not thinking it was going to be a big week. Yeah, me too. And then putting the show together, I was like, oh my God, these topics are me. Like, like I had ideas. So I was like, hey, Joe, why don't we do this on the show this week? But yeah. we don't have room. That's the thing. It's <laughs> like this. I feel like with COVID and everything being so spaced out, usually in, in the summer, you're like, our top five games of PlayStation to try to get a topic. But. It's been like every week there's something of importance. And even this week, so much so that I'll I'll forget Suicide Squad, a major game getting revealed. So with that, listen, there's no drop yet again. PlayStation's asleep at the wheel. Uh, So instead of the drop, we're going to skip it. So prepare for Angie's (laughs) stale Stale mail. (laughs) God damn it. Andy's snail mail. Each and every week, you can send in your questions over at PS Trophy Room on Twitter or the Casa de Bad Bit Discord server. Send us your questions. We read them on the show. You saw this one this week. Sprinkle throughout the show. It was beautiful. Jimmy's everywhere. But now we got some extras. And I'm very excited to read them. Or you can send in your mail to Andrew House. Yes, he does it, quote unquote, work for PlayStation in over four to five years. I get it. It's still fun to kind of fuck with this guy, right? <laughs> I think sure. so. I think so. <laughs> so I swim on over his house. You pen him a, a letter to him. I steal that mail from him. You know, eviction notices, I don't care. I take them. This week, we got two items in Andy's mail. Or, sorry, three. One of it was, uh, oof, it's an attorney. <laughs> He's being sued. <laughs> I was like, wait, I only see two of them. Oh, tax okay. evasion. No, I'm kidding. And he pays all his taxes. Nagachak writes in, with Horizon Zero Dawn on PC, oh, sorry, Horizon Zero Dawn on PC had a rocky start. It's currently at a 62% approval rating on Steam with users citing several bugs and caches. However, Death Stranding is at a 94% approval rating on Steam. Should Sony continue their port to exclusives? I'm oh, sorry. Port their exclusives to PC. Uh, 
from what I understand, the port job, whoever was handling it on Horizon's end, not great. Uh, and Death Stranding, very, very good. I think that was in house, if I'm not mistaken, mm-hmm. could be. But it's very so. interesting because these games oh, are both on the. Five did that DC. They the published PC it, one, right? Published. Yeah, okay. they published it. Though. So maybe they gave Kojima more money that he mm. doesn't need, you know? Right. But like both these games are running on the Decima engine, which makes me scratch my head of how one game could be so buggy and one game could be so good, which really yeah. has me to believe that. Uh, again, let me know if I was wrong. Twitter, whatever. This is definitely handled. Kojima handled uh, Death Stranding and Horizon was, I know it was ported out to a a company outside PlayStation. I think it kind of proves that. But Kyle, my question to you, should they continue this PC, you know, dipping their toes into the PC ecosystem? Should they stop here? Because these games are too powerful for PC. (laughs) Too powerful, man. Uh, No, they shouldn't stop. They just need, I think if that is the case and they picked a, uh, 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 out of what sort I'm looking for, not out of service house, but like a out of uh, house uh, company. Yeah, to do it, um, I think they just realize, all right, we're never using you again, yeah. and find somebody better or Wait. or have. Oh, is Jiminy back? I just fucking heard him. <laughs> Jiminy's Fuck back. Jiminy. Jiminy the cricket is back. <sighs> I just threw my making pen at the his wall. return to the oh. trophy room. New people of the trophy room. Here's the thing, okay? We've had a good run for past, I don't know, nine to ten months. A year. It's been a year. We had Jiminy the Cricket. This son of a bitch cricket, not even an inch long, inch wide, right? This thing could make noise like a son of a gun. It pisses Kyle off to no end. And I get it. It would piss me off. We saw, I mean, the road to greatness. I was trying to kill a mosquito. Yeah, it was a big mosquito. I didn't like it. Get that serenity He's, now, Kyle. There will be no Jiminy after this episode. <laughs> oh fuck! You're going after. Let you know that right line. now. I know where he is. He's stuck in the wall that go, uh, in the door that goes outside. There's only one exit, and it's through me. So Jiminy, get ready, buddy. It's over. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Anyways, no Sony should still port their games to PC. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. Uh, again. Maybe you try to build the shit in house or make sure that the person that's doing it out of house has enough of the funds to finish this port. Maybe it was a rush job. So yeah, there are definitely things to be considered here, but they should definitely keep going. Just make sure yeah. these ports are better. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nate writes in, I just finished touring the family cow farm. What Nate? You wanna- what are you doing? Well, family cow farm. All right. Okay. I'm interested, which has been completely converted into a fully robotic milking system. Hmm. What? Yeah. Robots. Grabbing your cows. Grabbing cow titty. And that's nuts. Yeah. That's just capitalism in the darkest sense. Yeah. That that didn't give me. It kind of was like, Joe, maybe you should go vegan. And then you're like, wait, no, I like dairy too much. And now I feel guilty for saying that. Which PlayStation mascot would be the best at milking cows the old way? Like in the old country, what? Kyle. Oh, what man. PlayStation? Ex- if someone's got to grab a tea, which one's doing it? You know, we're getting we're getting down. I've seen it on Nickelodeon. I think they're milking a cow, and uh, it's all sorts of things. I'm. He's doing I'm it going. Best. I'm going Joel. Joel. Uh, because I was gonna say Kratos, but I think Kratos would just get mad and slaughter the cow. I think I think he's gonna out. he's gonna pop pop an, an udder. Right? There you go. I kept on seeing <laughs> Joel. Joel, I think would have the the. This is Joel after the first game. Right. Like, I feel like he has the patience to kind of mm. nurture the cow and make sure everything's okay. I would say. I would say someone in the Horizon universe. Yeah. If you if you're good at making Errands, all these knickknacks, maybe? yeah, yeah. Because if you're good at making all these knickknacks with metals, you got you got to know how to milk a That's cow. Right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Or just make Clank do it. 
<laughs> Clank is like the intro to the robotic milking system anyway. He's yeah. the one that built it. So and like <laughs> he turns to Ratchet, but Ratchet, I, I don't want to get my hands all dirty. And Ratchet's like, you're gonna do what you you're gonna do what we, we came here to do. We're here to get paid. Slap <laughs> You know? Oh. I'm telling you, their relationship is uh, not what you, well, not what it <laughs> looks like. So yeah, back in the old country, I don't know who's gonna milk cows better. <laughs> but great question, Nate. And I have now so many questions for you. So, have you ever milked a cow, Nate? What is it like? Because I can't do anything with my hands, and I'm thinking just grabbing another would be just weird. <laughs> Let me know. In the comments down below, Nate. With that, guys, gang, gals, everyone, that's been the trophy room this week. Pow. Big, big week. But man, big we week. got through it. Where can yes, people find you? Uh, Who that Ninja 73 on Twitter and on PSN. And you can find everything else I do over at kindanyc.com and at kindanyc on Twitter. Uh, we're going to be. Um, partnering up with our friends at Brookland, uh, which is a cool esports bar area in, the, in Brooklyn, New York, for another Fall Guys tournament on PS4, so stay tuned to our Twitter over there for when signups go live. We have, we're sponsored with Red Bull and HyperX for like gaming headsets to give away and, and game uh, game codes and stuff, so like, yeah. Check out at kind of NYC on Twitter or Brookland underscore NY for updates on that. And Jiminy's like, I have something to plug too. Jim, <laughs> Jiminy can no, not going there. Uh, uh-uh. <laughs> it's going down, dude. He's gonna straight up murder tonight. I was gonna say Jiminy's gonna plug something, all right, but I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, mm. My goodness, you can find uh, the trophy room over at Bad Bit Games on YouTube. You can find the tro- or the video version of the trophy room on Bad Bit Games on YouTube. You can find us wherever you get your podcast services, whether that be Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify. Get us to number one on Spotify. We're on number two. We're okay. coming for you, Beyond. We're coming for you, Beyond. Jonathan Dornbush, I'm blaming you for the Halo uh, you know, delay. <laughs> uh, you're writing it, but you're the PlayStation guy over there? Okay, Jonathan. I see how it is. Oh, I'm kidding. Let me be on your show, please. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> that's it. With all that out of the way, you can find the Trophy Room over at PS Trophy Room on Twitter. Uh, uh, you can find me at Mr. Badbit. With all that said, with all that out of the way, everybody, keep hunting and keep playing PlayStation. Get over here, Jiminy!